Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to DC Startup Week. Uh, excited to have you all joining today's event. Uh, I'm going to uh, go through today's presentation on how to reclaim uh, your freedom and time by delegating your business. Uh, and so let me just get everything set up here. There we go. Um, and first and foremost, I appreciate your time and attention today. Uh, we've got 45 minutes, so we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to be pretty high energy going through these slides. First question I know we're going to get is, are we going to share the slides and the recording afterwards? Yes and yes. Uh, we have an amazing team from Philosophy Growth here making the magic happen behind the scenes. So they will share the recording. We'll also share the slides uh, and we'll we'll have a link tree and a QR code and things so you can get in touch. Uh, so first off, um, let me just uh, thank you, uh, you know, for joining us. We're going to go through today's presentation and I'm going to share a variety of frameworks that you can implement uh, either with a do it yourself, done with you or done for you solutions. Uh, and so I want to at least introduce the frameworks so you understand them. I also want to tell you a little bit about Malloy Industries Consulting Group, which helps multi-million dollar company executives to scale their business from 2 million to 22 million in revenue. You know, we work with CEOs like you who don't have the time to recruit, interview, vet, hire, onboard, and train full-time employees. Um, and, you know, they want to earn more revenue while working less in the business. So Malloy Industries helps companies collaborate with trusted, vetted experts who are fractional executives that can help them achieve their business objectives, reach investor milestones, and reclaim their valuable time. And so the first thing we're going to do uh, to start this presentation is get you all to stretch uh, a little bit, both physically, you know, let's stay awake for this, uh, as well as mentally, you know, get you to expand outside of your comfort zone um, while we go through things today. Um, and I want to see if any of these uh, feelings are familiar to you. Uh, you know, have you dealt with failure, frustration, suffering? You know, have you ever wondered, uh, you know, why you can't take a week's vacation from your business and actually feel confident that it's going to still be running smoothly and perhaps even making you more money when you return refreshed from that vacation? You know, do you want to spend more quality time with the folks you love uh, without having to constantly check your phone and feeling stressed and anxious about work? Well, guess what? You're not alone. Uh, you know, I want to confirm your suspicions uh, and let you know that everyone on this session today is here because they're probably dealing with similar problems. All right. Um, and again, if you do have questions, drop them in the chat uh, and team from Velocity Growth. I may not see the chat questions, so feel free uh, to chime in and, uh, and interrupt me at any point. I want to make this interactive if folks have questions. Uh, so the next thing I want to share with you is that if you can dream it, you can do it. And this probably isn't the first time you've thought about why aren't you benefiting from being your own boss? I'm sure you've tried other things uh, and think you failed. Well, one of the first things we're going to do in today's presentation is reframe your past, present, and future failures. Because as Nelson Mandela said, it's not win or lose, it's win or learn. And I bet everybody here has a lot of learnings uh, from their entrepreneurial journeys. And so we have a shared enemy, and it is our hustle culture that teaches us there's always more, more money to make, a bigger title or promotion, a higher wall to climb. I want you to take a moment today and reflect on what it is that you're after and what you're willing to do to get there. Remember, this is your life. It doesn't matter what other folks on social media are telling you or showing you that they're doing. The race is long, and in the end, it's only with yourself. And so I want to ask you, too, what's your why? What do you want to do with your freedom and time? Okay, my worldview has massively shifted this year with the birth of my first son, uh, Max Michael Malloy. And now everything I do is to max my time with Max. And so this entire presentation is designed to get you to believe one thing, and that is that delegation and automation are the key to getting the results you desire most. By the time I finish my presentation today, you are gonna possess at least three new frameworks that you can apply to delegate and automate your business in order to reclaim your freedom of time. And so let's start with the definition of value. I was a math major, and I want to make sure that you understand this value equation, because I learned this formula uh, while I was on paternity leave, reading and listening to a book by Alex Formosi called $100 Million Offers. And let's take a look at the numerator. Uh, and I want you to think in terms of what is the value you deliver to your customers 
in terms of what is the dream outcome they want to achieve and how likely do they think they are to achieve it, okay? And if you can increase the value of the dream outcome and or increase the perceived likelihood, the probability that they're going to reach it, you're delivering more value. Now, on the denominator, we have time delay and effort and sacrifice. And so if you can have them achieve that dream outcome faster, you're delivering more value. If you can have them go through less effort and sacrifice in order to get that uh, dream outcome, you're delivering more value. So for example, somebody might spend 100 bucks a month on a gym membership, but you know the dream outcome they want is a, a great beach bod. The likelihood, eh, I'm not too sure, time delay is going to take a while, effort and sacrifice, it's a lot of work going to the gym all the time. Versus somebody might pay $25,000 to get liposuction. You know you're going to get it in about two hours, which is pretty quick. You don't have to do much besides pay for it. So there's just a little bit thinking about the value and how much you can charge for your product and services. So now uh, that we understand value, let's take a look at our value ladder. Uh, and I'm going to drop a little Mad Libs here in the chat. Uh, and would love for all the attendees to respond in the chat uh, with that sentence, you know, about what who your dream customer is, what dream outcome you help them achieve uh, as a result of the new opportunity that you offer. So for Malloy Industries, we help multi-million dollar company executives achieve freedom of time through frameworks to delegate and automate their business. Look forward to seeing what uh, you all share in the chat. So now a brief introduction. Hi, I'm Mike Malloy. Uh, the star of the story today, uh, a little bit of my background. I grew up in Anne Arundel County, Maryland, went to Boston College, studied math and computer science. Uh, I worked at Deloitte Consulting, uh, started in about 2008, uh, which was a good time. Uh, very lucky to have a job. And Deloitte was kind enough to pay for me to go to Georgetown, where I got my master's in computer science. Uh, and I followed the very typical career path from computer scientist to traveling sunglasses salesman. And so I spent the second half of my 20s as the CEO of Waveborn Sunglasses. I'll touch, tell you more about that in a minute. Uh, after Waveborn, I worked at the House Sand Incubator in D.C. for five years, uh, serving as the program director, uh, guiding early stage social entrepreneurs through their journey. Uh, and for the past uh, about 15 months, I have been the vice president here at Malloy Industries, uh, helping grow stage companies grow and scale with fractional executives. Uh, I've also had the privilege of serving as an entrepreneur in resident at Georgetown University for eight school years, uh, and this is now my fourth year as an adjunct professor at Georgetown, uh, where I was uh, very lucky to be awarded the Outstanding Entrepreneurship Faculty Award last spring uh, for my startup internship seminar course. Uh, and so I'm an entrepreneur like you, and a few years ago, I was single, broke, and going through both business and personal bankruptcy while living in my parents' basement with my dog, Shay. Uh, I had ran Waveborn sunglasses for about six years. We built 41 different iterations of a seasonal sunglass business. Uh, and it was similar to Tom Shoes or Warby Parker. We had a buy one, give one model. We also donated 10% of our profits to try to fund cataract surgeries in developing countries. Uh, but ultimately it didn't work out, you know, and I've managed more than a hundred different interns in my career and, and taught more than a hundred different Georgetown students uh, how to not suck as an intern uh, through my Georgetown startup internship seminar. And so if you're like me, you probably tried to delegate to junior or mid-level staff. And at the first sign of not getting the results you expected, you kind of pull back the reins and start micromanaging or taking the entire project, uh, a task back off their plate and onto your plate. Um, and after four straight winners of, you know, trying to run this company, I found myself in this loop over and over again with all these manual processes on my place, on my plate. Uh, and ultimately, I had a kind of come to Jesus conversation with one of my advisors the summer of 2016 and realized it was time to shut the company down. We had to go through business bankruptcy. I had personally guaranteed $350,000 on top of the more than half a million we'd raised from investors. We had 27 different investors that I had to have. Uh, you know, very humbling conversations with uh, about winding down the company. And, you know, after going through that situation, I realized the problem wasn't the business model or the product or too small of a market. The problem was how I failed to delegate work to trusted experts. I didn't document repeatable standard operating procedures for current or future team members. And I didn't design any automated systems that would enable the business to scale. And so fast forward five and a half years later, after I spent five years at the program director at the Halcyon Incubator, supporting and learning from the next generation of social entrepreneurs, I took another entrepreneurial leap last summer to start Malloy Industries, 
because my wife and I had moved to Rehoboth Beach, Delaware uh, during COVID, and I had no plans of really going back to an office ever again. Uh, and I, my why, uh, this burning desire I have is to earn enough income to be able to provide for my family, including my 10 nieces and nephews, so they can go to college. Uh, I was able to attend Boston College because my great aunt Agnes helped pay for it. And my oldest niece pictured here, Molly, uh, just started her freshman year at BC. And tuition is $84,000 a year. Uh, and Molly is the oldest of six of my sister's kids. And we have some other nieces and nephews, not to mention uh, little baby Max, who will be going to college before we know it. Uh, and so that's my why, what motivates me to work. And I want to pause for a second and ask you to reflect on what's your why? Why are you doing what you're doing? I also want to be vulnerable with you here. Uh, this photo was one of the last ones taken with my mom before she passed away in September last year. And if you've ever had anyone you love pass away, you know that that shakes you to the core. Um, and, and losing my mom caused me to reevaluate how I wanted to spend my 4,000 weeks on earth, uh, how I could create positive impact in the world while being able to focus on my family. And there's this conspiracy. And, and I wanna say it's not our fault. All those years of failures and self-doubt and financial constraints were actually because I was trying to achieve every business objective and reach every investor milestone on my own. No wonder I was struggling. You know, there are these big little lies that society tells us. For years, they've been telling us we got to hustle harder and keep grinding and work 24 seven. You got to reply to every email as quick as possible. Once you figure out that it's wrong, you can change your ways just like I did. You know, and the villain in today's story is this hustle culture. Uh, with their soul-crushing pressure to work 80 hours a week as the chief everything officer. The real problem is the pictures painted on social media where CEOs are raising millions of dollars in one post, with no mention of the hundreds of no's they heard along the way, celebrating that 24-7 hustle culture. And somehow they always have time to eat this delicious avocado toast and posting these photos on Instagram of how perfect their life is. Well, they're the ones keeping me and you from reclaiming our time and scaling our business. So today, I'm going to show you how to unlock some of the secrets you need to be able to grow and scale. The first framework I am super pumped to share with you uh, is called Do and Document. And so one of my mentors uh, at Malloy Industries, William Casper, taught me this framework to do and document each standard operating procedure as and when you're doing it. Don't plan to go back two weeks later and say, oh, I'm going to carve out a Saturday. I'm going to write down all my SOPs. Invest an extra 10% of time and effort now, today, the next time you do something that you know is going to repeat so you don't have to document it later or ever do it again. So you can apply this powerful principle of compound interest to your workflows if each time you or one of your colleagues executes a standard operating procedure, you take one step towards automating or delegating it. And so there are two incredibly powerful tools uh, the first is Loom, and, and I bet most of you have heard of Loom. Uh, it's a video recording software similar to Zoom, but it lets you easily share your desktop. You can record videos, uh, and as you go through and do the task, you're able to show what you're doing on the computer and also give kind of an audio uh, color commentary, if you will, explaining the step-by-step, -step, and also maybe taking a, a few seconds at the front end to explain why we're doing this when it comes up. Now, that super magical tool that I bet you have never heard of uh, is a little tool called Scribe How. Uh, and so the website is scribehow.com. And what that allows you to do is basically uh, record every single click that you did um, to create a step-by-step -step standard operating procedure. And all you have to do is push record. Same, you push record on Loom, record on Scribe, do the task, talk a little bit through how you do it, hit stop on both. And then boom, as you can see here, you can get a Scribe and a Loom video for how to do a variety of different tasks. Uh, and Scribe is, they're both free to sign up for. They have paid options, um, but you can get started for free. Uh, and so here's just the first four steps of one of my Scribes. Uh, you know, you go to our website, it shows you what to click on, what to click on again, and, and you go from there. And whether it's a 10 step or 100 step Scribe, whether people are a video, audio, or kinesthetic learner, having these two together will enable you to teach others how to do some of your core business functions and be able to delegate those standard operating procedures and also not have to train everybody because the people on your team today may not be the people working with you in one, three, five, 10 years. However, if you record how to do it, the time that it takes to onboard and train new employees dramatically decreases. 
Um, and so this process has also worked well for our clients. Uh, one company in particular we've worked with, Breaking Tea, you know, their employees weren't able to take vacation because nobody else in the 17 person company knew how to do what they do. And so their CEO recently required each employee to use Loom video to document one of their SOPs and begin building a cross training repository that will allow their employees to take more time off and reduce employee burnout. And so once we realize that we can work smarter, not harder, then you can start working on the business instead of in the business. And so by designing uh, these efficient and effective standard operating procedures, you're gonna be able to work much faster uh, and work much less than 80 hours, maybe even less than 40 hours a week. All right, so the next framework I'm excited to share is this concept of eating the frog on the note card for breakfast. And I've combined two things that my parents love to, to develop this framework. My dad always carries note cards in his pocket, including at church uh, when he would make up long division problems to keep little Mike occupied during the priest's lengthy homilies. And my mom always loved using these Crayola markers. In fact, uh, believe it or not, I got a pack right here uh, and I was able to save seven packs of my mom's old markers to have enough ink for the next few years to make these note cards. Uh, and so every morning I take a cold shower to wake up and I recite my 10 daily affirmations from the greatest salesman in the world, part one and two. And, and one of them is that never again will I greet the dawn without a map. And so what that means is each night before I go to bed, I get out a note card and I look at my calendar uh, for the next day, and I look at my tasks for today, and uh, I write down my frog. What is the one thing that I need to do first and foremost when I start the next day? I'm going to eat this frog for breakfast, and I, I have a little frog here to keep on my desk to put on that note card to make sure before I check my email or I look at notifications on my phone or I get distracted by my fantasy football roster, whatever it might be, I have to do this frog first. Uh, and after I digest the frog, then I can flip the card over uh, and I've got a color-coded list of projects and tasks that I know are important to me to accomplish to move my business forward. And nowhere on these lists does it ever say, you know, check my email or scroll through social media. All right. These are impactful work that you can do uh, that will move the, the needle forward on your business. And just imagine how much more work you could get done on your business if you were following your own map with what you need to do before you deal with other people's urgent fires in your inbox. And as a result of applying these two frameworks this spring, I was able to take two months off on paternity leave to cherish the first few weeks with my newborn son, Max. And I'm taking most of this month off. As a matter of fact, this is the only meeting I've got all week uh, was to give this presentation to you all uh, so that I can hang out with Max because of the frameworks you're gonna learn today, I've transformed to become more confident in the systems and frameworks to scale our business and serve our clients' needs, all while maintaining my freedom of time to maximize my time with Max. And so we've got three secrets that I'm going to share. And the first secret we've given you a sneak preview here is that delegation and automation are the key to reclaiming your time. The second secret is that you can use leverage to maintain your standard of quality. And the third secret is that your new system will be resilient and adaptable to changes uh, in the marketplace. And Larissa, I just saw uh, your note here. Greatest Salesman of the World Part 2 is phenomenal. Highly recommend it. I spent 10 months on the first one. You only got to spend 10 weeks on the second one. Uh, definitely check it out. And so let's take a look at secret number one. Uh, we're going to introduce you to the delegation matrix, the ABC model scorecard, the XDS operational analysis, and I'm going to share some of my favorite automation tools. And so one year ago, I joined a CEO accountability group hosted by Start, Grow, Manage. Uh, and it was one of the best decisions I've made as an entrepreneur because I saw firsthand how amazing Sophia, who's right there in the top middle, and Carla were at supporting Joe, who's there in the bottom middle, and Jeff, who's not pictured there. They were, Sophia and Carla were both virtual assistants, and I knew that I needed a Sophia 2.0 to run my business. Uh, but what I didn't know was what I was going to get her to do or how I was going to delegate and, and figure out what I should assign to somebody else. And that's where the framework of the delegation matrix decisions comes in. And so there's four quadrants here. Uh, what do you like? What do you don't like? What are you efficient? What are you inefficient at? We're going to start in the bottom right with, you know, what do you not like and are inefficient at? Well, guess what? That's what you're going to delegate first. And I encourage you to get out a pen and paper or open a Google Doc or a Word Doc 
and just start jotting down as we go through this presentation, what's all the shit that you hate doing and you're not even good at, all right? That is the first stuff that you wanna delegate. And one of the ways you delegate it is by giving it to people that are currently on your team or making a position description for somebody that you wanna hire. And it doesn't have to be a full-time person. You know, uh, Our whole business is specializing in fractional people for two, 10, 20 hours a week that can take these tasks off your plate. So the next two buckets you wanna look at is either what you don't like and are efficient at, or what do you like but are inefficient at? And so for example, I really like sending the follow-up after meetings and individualization is one of my strengths, but what I found is it takes me a long time and if I don't do it like right away, it might be two or three weeks until I follow up because I'm so inefficient at it. So that's something that I've delegated to my project managers. Uh, you also wanna think about you know things you might be really fast at doing, but you don't like it. Like I'm pretty fast at sending out invoices in QuickBooks, but that's not my core strength. So now my project managers send out the invoices to clients once a month. Uh, and then in the top left quadrant, things you like and efficient at, hold on to those. You know, if you clear out all three other boxes, you want to get rid of some of them, that's great. Uh, but again, start in the bottom right with what you don't like and are inefficient at. And you need to know who to delegate these things to. Uh, and there may not be one magical unicorn human out there who can do all the things that you don't want to do. Um, and uh, thanks, Flo. Uh, just check in the comments there. So you can use personality assessments like Myers Briggs, Clifton Strengths Finders, Bleaker's Collaborative Intelligence, and Gretchen Rubin's Four Tendencies as part of the interviewing process, uh, so that you can identify the the complementary strengths and skills that others have, so you can delegate your work to them. And again, I have people do uh, all four of these during the interview process before anybody gets hired to work with me. Uh, I want to know all of these, and it helps me kind of map out what types of, of skills and activities, and I've hired for a few different positions, and you need a different temperament for different roles. Um, all right, and so the next rules, uh, these are actually from my dad uh, and my old business coach. The first one is the 10-80-10 rule for delegation. So if you're going to delegate a project to someone, you're going to spend the first 10% with them, and you're going to explain the why. How does this, uh, you know, why does this matter? How is this connected to the rest of the business? And you're going to describe what does success look like? What's the goal line? How are they going to know the project's done and that it was successfully done? If they have any questions, you'll go over it. Then you get out the way for the next 80%. You let them run with it. And you know that they're not going to do things exactly as you would have. They're going to zig where you would have zagged. They might create it slightly different. They might use different words or slightly different colors, whatever it might be. That's okay. All right. The goal of delegating is not to micromanage and have little clones of you doing everything exactly as you would, because you're not great at doing everything. Newsflash. All right. Uh, and after they go through that 80 percent and they are allowed to check in if they have questions. But the goal is not for you to be looking over their shoulder. It's to give them the autonomy because people need autonomy, relatedness and competency in their work to know that they value their work. And then you come back at the last 10 percent. Uh, and this ties into the last one with show, tell, check, correct. You're coming in at the end to check their work, correct, you know, give them a compliment sandwich or like, oh my God, this looks so beautiful. Hey, let's tweak the language there in that second paragraph, use this instead. Man, you did an awesome job. Once you make that change, go ahead and send it to the client. I really appreciate you, all right? Uh, and then there's the 20 minute rule. And so my dad spent uh, more than four decades working in retail. Uh, I used to work at Sears and, you know, he would, they'd get the new shipment in of fall sweaters and they need to put out the displays. So it'd be truck day, he'd unload the box. And he'd say, hey, you know, Sharon, come over here. I need you to load these sweaters up on the display, you know, hang them up on the hangers. Give her the assignment, walk away, come back 20 minutes later. And if Sharon hadn't started hanging up the sweaters, he'd roll up his sleeves, open up the box, hang the first one, show her how to do it, and give her the activation energy so that she can move forward with the task. All right. You don't want to assign people something and then not check in on it until a week later in your next one on one and realize they didn't do anything because the link didn't work or they couldn't log in or something. All right, so make sure that you have that uh, 20 minute rule kind of checking in after projects have been assigned or delegated. And sometimes deciding what not to do is as important as deciding what to do. All right, let that sink in for a second. You know, what are the things that you need to stop doing entirely? All right, the next framework I learned uh, from Dan Sullivan. Dan Sullivan is the founder and president of The Strategic Coach. Uh, which helps accomplished entrepreneurs reach new heights and success and happiness. He's got over 40 years experience uh, as a coach and has literally coached thousands of entrepreneurs worldwide. So this ABC model scorecard helps you shift from irritation to fascination. And so it's 
there's some similarities here with the delegation matrix. This time we're using three circles instead of four boxes. The outside A circle is everything that's irritating. What are the tasks that you do that are irritating? You don't enjoy them. They are a net negative on your energy and mood. You feel drained after doing them. They distract you from the high level things you need to be doing for your business. Write them down. And then in the B circle, what are the things that, okay, that are okay? For example, sending invoices to clients, that's okay. I'm gonna make some money on it. I don't mind doing it. But again, nothing about using QuickBooks fascinates and motivates me. So this third circle, the C circle, what are all the tasks that are fascinating and motivating? All right. And so we all have these activities that irritate us. They bore us. They drain our energy. The problem is thinking that that's just a necessary part of business. It's a cost of doing business. No, it's not because you could spend money to pay somebody else to do those things. And if you have this ABC circle list of activities, I want you to, to jot down the percent of time in a given week you spend on each of those buckets. And I guarantee you're spending a lot more time in A than you want and a lot less time in C than you want. And so part of applying this uh, framework is figuring out how do you shift your time and energy to focus more on what fascinates and motivates you. Uh, the next framework we have is the XDS one month operational analysis. Uh, and so you start by leveraging an amazing tool called Toggle, which I use to track how you spend your time at work on impactful, important projects versus easy, low leverage, repeatable tasks like email. Like I have one of my tasks is email triage. And I know if I'm doing email triage, I'm not really moving my business forward. I'm putting out the fires. So I try to do that as late in the day as possible uh, and spend my mornings working on the most impactful work. And so to start implementing it, you need to analyze the tasks you perform and the amount of time you spend on them um, over the course of a week. You could get a whole month using Toggle, that's great, but you can start with a week um, because then it gives you some time to um, implement what are you gonna cut, what do you wanna delegate, and what do you need to systematize, all right? There's a ton of powerful leverage that can be in here, but I don't wanna take too much time as we've only got about 15 minutes left. I'm gonna keep rolling. Here are some of my favorite automation tools. Um, we've got Airtable, which I run my whole business and my whole Georgetown class through Airtable. Calendly saves so much time scheduling. Everybody I work with is required to have Grammarly plugged in to proofread. Uh, we've got HubSpot as a CRM with marketing automations. Slack can connect to all sorts of things. We've talked about Toggle and Zapier as well to create automations. Uh, so I also want to teach you real quick how to Marie Kondo your tabs. So the magical art of tidying up here. There is a little plugin uh, or a Chrome extension, I should say, called OneTab, which you can see right up here. And when you click that little thing, it sucks everything up, saves them for later. All right. Uh, and in fact, to get ready to give you this presentation, I had about seven windows and 50 tabs open. So I sucked them all up so I wouldn't be distracted. And I can open them up later when I want to work on those projects. So it's a great process to do at the end of the day, definitely at the end of the week. Um, and if you have different clients or projects you're working on, group the tabs together. If, for example, we have nine different services we offer at Malloy Industries. If I need to make an update to all nine of the services pages, I can just open up uh, those nine pages there on the right, and it's easy to edit them very quickly. Uh, and so it's not just us. You know, we've helped a lot of CEOs delegate and automate their companies for scale. We help Traxel to redefine and streamline their sales strategy and process by leveraging distributors to install their patented method for painting optical fiber on the road to close the digital divide. Um, and as we talked about at the beginning, uh, and if you want to scan that little QR code, by the way, that'll go to the Malloy Industries link tree. You can check out our website. You can schedule a complimentary consultation with us. Uh, we also have a series of master classes that we offer. This presentation is one uh, master class that I give, but we have more than 100 trusted experts in our network uh, who will be giving master classes uh, online similar to this in 30 to 60 minutes via Zoom all fall. So you can check those out and register. Uh, and you know, with the solutions we're talking about today, I'm trying to quickly tell you how you can do it yourself. We'll also help you do it with you or even do it for you in some cases. Uh, and you're not alone, all right? You don't have to be a technical wizard or have a massive HR department uh, to do all the things that we just went over. In fact, my parents, they received a lifetime tech support contract when they paid for me to go to Boston College and study computer science and math. So I've logged close to 10,000 hours of FaceTime, phone, text, email support over the years with an infinite amount of patience and grace, uh, which I would be delighted to share with you all. And so we're going to dive into secret number two now that you can use leverage to maintain your standard of quality. We're going to go over how to automate unlimited copy and paste 
your minimum acceptable day, uh, and some leverage lists. So this next framework uh, is going to save you hundreds of hours of your life, all right? Um, and I'm going to share the sound. And I used this framework to raise $10,000 in less than a day and a half. And I did it twice. And the second time was for this uh, Georgetown University. Georgetown. Uh, the the team, by the way, it's 12, 8 to 13. Winner goes to Ashford. got Georgetown in white. I was able to uh, use that video uh, along with the tool I'm about to show you to raise more than $10,000 from Georgetown Ultimate Alumni uh, in less than a day and a half. All right. And so this tool is called Brevi. If you are a PC user, Google Brevi, B-R-E-E-V-Y. Uh, it has literally saved me hundreds of hours because it allows you to copy and paste hundreds of things. So anytime you need to copy and paste a link, especially a Google Doc or a Calendly, uh, you know, things that are, are you would never have memorized, you can create a very short abbreviation. And then when I type CC link semicolon, it fills in that Calendly link. All right. As a business owner, you know, I have my social security memorized. I don't have my EIN number memorized. So I just type EIN semicolon and it fills it in if I'm filling out a form. All right. Um, I've got links to all sorts of things. This is just a snippet of, you know, more than 100 different copy and pastes that I have saved. And good news, if you're a Mac user, there's a tool called Text Replacement, which you can use for free. Um, and there is a software text expander. Uh, that's got like a monthly subscription thing if you want to sign up for it. I'm not a Mac guy, but I think Text Replacement will do the job for you. Brevi is, I think, a $35 one-time fee, but you're paying $35 for literally hundreds of hours of your life. So I think it's absolutely worth it. Uh, and basically, the second time you highlight a, a string to hit Control-C, open Brevi or text replacement, think about the easiest thing you can remember for that shortcut, uh, used it, uh, and I use a trigger key. So I type in the, the few letters, I hit a semicolon, it fills it in. Um, and dun, 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 you can also do it on your iPhone. How about that? All right, just go to settings, general keyboard text replacement, um, and you can get it set up on your your cell phone uh, for faster texting. And so we've got about 13 minutes, so I'm gonna cruise uh, through this as well. Um, and I'm just checking the chat too. If you have questions, please do drop them in to the chat. Habits, very simply, don't break the chain. Jerry Seinfeld is so funny because his minimum acceptable day was to write one joke a day. He didn't have to write 10 or 20, he had to write one. And if you wrote one joke, he put a red X on the calendar, once you got that chain, you don't want to break it. Keep that momentum rolling uh, and come up with a keystone habit. I could talk for hours uh, about habits. I even teach a whole lecture for my Georgetown students. Um, if you want uh, that video uh, lecture and resources, I just draw my email in the chat. Send me an email. Uh, I want to quickly cover this concept of activation energy. So, you know, to do one push up, it takes a fair amount of energy to like get down on your hands and feet and get ready for that push up. After you've done one push-up, though, it's pretty easy to do two. Doing 20 or 40 or 50, that's a little harder, but from one to two is pretty easy. Same principle applies uh, when you're washing the dishes. Don't try to clean every dish in the sink. Just tell yourself, I'm going to wash one dish. And then once you're there, you got your sleeves rolled up, your hands are wet, the sponges already has some soap on it. Maybe you'll do two or 10 or 20 there. Um, but it's important as you think about developing good habits to set the bar low. You want to be able to uh, make it so easy you can't say no, so you can consistently do these habits. Next framework we've got is this concept of leverage lists. So we're going to get rid of to-do lists because they're actions you complete regularly. Leverage lists are actions that work for you after completion. You could go to the gym or you could book a personal trainer for three months. You could train someone on the marketing team or you could record the training with Loom and Scribe to create reusable SOPs for your current and future team members so you never have to lead that training ever again. All right. To-do lists are actually time liabilities because they're going to require willpower again in the future, whereas leverage lists are time assets that need willpower once. And honestly, it might be a little bit more willpower today, but then they live on in the future. So you want to invest in time assets. And there's a simple razor that will distinguish the two lists. 
If there's an activity and once done, the item will appear repetitively again, you're working on time liabilities, unfortunately. However, if once this activity is done, your future to-do list is forever shorter and easier, you're working on time assets. Uh, and I wanna give a shout out to Carrie Clark because I wouldn't be here today giving this presentation or running this company if it wasn't for her idea last summer. You know, She was really struggling to find trusted vetted consultants and contractors to build her company. She started this business breakout, um, which does kind of remote team building activities. Uh, and she started during COVID. Two years ago, they were making zero dollars. Now they're doing 3 million in annual revenue. Uh, and she had wasted so much time and energy trying to find smart people with the skills she was missing on her team. So she told me to use my relationships and my unique abilities, AKA dad jokes, uh, to create a network or consulting group that entrepreneurs can tap into to recruit these uh, trusted vetted experts to help them build their team in a fraction of the time because you don't have to hire full-time employees to do all of the things that we're talking about, all right? Um, and so now we're gonna really quickly apply Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, which it, I'll go over it real quick. The base of it is your physiological and safety needs, food, water, shelter, do you have a place to sleep? Where's your next meal coming from? I've been that entrepreneur who doesn't know where his next meal is coming from and only goes to events if there's food and that might be dinner and you might bring leftovers home for lunch the next day. Uh, you know, It's really hard to get up to self-actualization uh, without those basic needs or even the intermediate needs of a sense of love and belonging and some self-esteem, all right? And so we're gonna apply those to your customers, employees, and investors. So at the top of the pyramid, we've got your customers. Basic need, you gotta meet their expectations so they're satisfied. Middle need is to meet their desires so they're committed. The magic happens when you meet their unrecognized needs and they become brand evangelists. They wanna sing your praises from the rooftops, all right? Um, I'm hoping too that you're getting so much value out of this presentation that you're gonna go be an evangelist for Malloy Industries and tell people all the great stuff you learned at DC Startup. Human being, I'm genuinely gonna enjoy interacting with uh, over the next several years. Uh, and at the top of that pyramid for investors is legacy. It's a pride of ownership. You know, what do uh, investors want to tell their kids and grandkids that they use their wealth to invest in? All right. Uh, one of the best examples, a uh, Halcyon company I worked with called Coral Vita. All right. They uh, restore the earth's dying reefs by planting corals that they've grown on land that are temperature resilient and can help rebuild our reefs. They've raised more than a million dollars and everyone who invested in them has a connection to scuba diving or coral reefs or grew up scuba diving or loves it, including um, Max Scherzer, uh, the Cy Young winning pitcher, invested because he loves going scuba diving. So what is it that people care about? that They want to, again, have that pride of ownership. And this also includes, you know, what do they want to brag to their buddies on the golf course about that they've invested in? Last but not least, Pyramid, uh, we learned this from another Mike M's book called Fix This Next. And this is your business hierarchy of needs, all right? There's a, a great saying that sales cures all um, issues. Well, not all of them, but it's a great place to start because if you're not selling anything, you're not generating any revenue. After you've got the sales coming in, next off, you need to get the profit coming in and you need to look for ways uh, to you know, cut costs uh, and increase your margin there so that you can then create some orders some systems and processes in the business to ultimately be able to have a larger impact and legacy. Uh, and if you want help uh, applying this to your business, uh, we have one of our trusted consultants, uh, Ashley at A Squared Online. She offers a, a 60 minute complimentary session uh, to anybody uh, who's attending today's uh, DC Startup Week event um, to kind of apply some of these fix this next principles. And so I just dropped a link to, to her strategy session there in the chat for you. And a couple more case studies, you know, Connor is somebody we've worked with closely. Uh, he has a team of BDRs and SDRs, kind of uh, sales development reps that will help you book meetings. Uh, we both brought him clients to work with, as well as matched him with other people in the Malloy Industries Consulting Group to help him as a HR generalist um, on the, the HR department. And so I want to recap quickly the three secrets from today's presentation. Um, you know, and I want to ask a couple of questions too, just to reflect on like, do you think that delegation and automation are the key to reclaiming your time? You know, can you see how you can use leverage, especially those leverage lists to maintain your standard of quality? Um, and, and ultimately those Maslow's hierarchy of needs that we just applied to customers, employees, investors, and your business, 
you know, that is a super powerful lens at which to look through how you interact with the most important stakeholders uh, in your business. Uh, and so how many of you are so excited right now? We're coming to the end of the presentation. Um, yes, Becca, we're, we're so excited to share the recording afterwards. We're also going to share the slides. Uh, I have a feeling some of you may also be feeling a little overwhelmed uh, drinking from the fire hose. Uh, and so just going to spend the last couple of minutes here telling you a little bit about how we can help you implement these frameworks. Um, because this is exactly why we created the Malloy Industries Consulting Group. And, you know, uh, I'll drop our uh, link tree here in the chat for you with a link to our website. It's taken more than a year of my life to uh, build this business. And this is a year when my mom passed away one week after my wife found out she was pregnant with my first son. Um, it's a year filled with hundred more than 150 customer discovery interviews and Zoom meetings. Um, to figure out what are the needs that growth stage companies have and how can we uh, build a, an amazing group of consultants and subject matter experts to meet those needs. You know, we've invested more than $100,000 to build this dream team and it's totally worth it because now you can use it without going through the same um, uh, effort and sacrifice that we did to put it together. Our expert community brings more than a uh, thousand years of diverse experience and unique abilities. Um, and because we've got all these resources created, you don't have to go through a lot of the pains and struggles that I did uh, in trying to scale Waveborn too quickly. And so the Malloy Industries Consulting Group, uh, we help growth stage company executives build remote consulting teams so you can get your time back while scaling your business from a couple million up to 20 million or more. And based on all those customer discovery interviews, we found that there are nine key buckets that companies need help with in marketing, sales human resources, fundraising strategy, operations, technology, finance, or coaching. Uh, if any of that sounds like you, uh, you know, we'd love to connect. Uh, here's some of the, the other companies that we've worked with uh, as well. And I'm just gonna jump here to the question slide. So we've got a couple minutes. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to come off of mute and ask them. Uh, I'd also love to, if you learned one or more things in this presentation, drop it in the chat. You know, what 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 did you learn? Every good story is only as good as uh, what leaves the room. So I'm hoping that you have some lessons that you can carry on with you uh, through DC Startup Week and beyond. So yeah, would love uh, anything you wanna share in the chat or if folks wanna come off mute, um, that would be great uh, as well. I really appreciate everybody's time and attention. Yeah.